What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and kind of figured probably wouldn't make it through this entire preseason tournament without some sort of slip up, or I guess wake up call is the best term to use, but obviously going into this game against Bayern Munich, it was always going to be difficult, and I mean, it, it truly is, they're one of the best clubs in the world, even if they are missing a couple of their best players, you know, newer Boateng, not in, but still, even despite not having them, still really good. You've got Ancelotti as a manager who's a really good manager. So this was always going to be difficult. On top of that, they're looking to bounce back from two embarrassing losses. You know, the getting crushed by AC Milan and then just losing to Arsenal. Even if it was just on penalties, losing to a sorry club like Arsenal always got to be rough. <laughs> sorry, I, anytime I get a chance to take Arsenal, I, I have to take a shot at Arsenal. So anyway, going into this one, we've got a little bit of a different lineup, and that did show in the first half. And I don't know if it was entirely the new lineup. I think a couple players did sort of embarrass themselves in the first half as well. So a little bit of new lineup plus players underperforming, but then Conte kind of got in their ear at the water break, started to step it up a little bit, got that goal right before halftime. And second half was kind of a... I don't know, it just wasn't as entertaining as the first half in my opinion because it looked like we were very set out second half to make sure we do not let up another goal. But Bayern were also looking to make sure we didn't get another goal. So it was very defensive second half and not nearly as entertaining as the first half or pretty much any preseason tournament. You want to see a lot of goals. You want to see teams going for it. Obviously we were going for it, but we were also not really throwing forward our wing backs because we were concerned about giving up another goal and our wing backs had a lot to do with, the, with that in the first half so I don't know it was pretty defensive minded second half but we did play well in the second half we definitely stepped it up created some of the best chances in the second half and obviously got ourselves a second goal that made it a bit more of a respectable scoreline so just first of all going to talk about the lineup because it is an interesting lineup it's pretty much kind of what I wanted after the last game I wanted to see a couple young players thrown into the team that we saw against Arsenal. You know, the first team plus a couple youngsters. And so Christensen gets a start in the center of the defense, and Boga gets a start uh, where Pedro normally would have, but since he's out with injury, Boga got to play most of the game. Um, and so based off of that, not a bad lineup. My problem, though, with those two changes is really just one. I don't think Christensen is the center of those three. One of the things that I've noticed about how the system works under Conte is the two defenders on the outside are pretty much defenders. And then the one in the center is almost like a stopper. You know, you watch David Luiz in that position. He just comes flying out and will sometimes win it, sometimes put pressure on somebody, but he's always there. And so you've got David Luiz and then Conte also drops in. As, it's almost like you've got two defensive mids there. And then Cahill and Espilicueta drop in, and they're the ones covering as the uh, wingbacks are getting back almost as fullbacks. And so that's almost what it looks like whenever the other team is coming our way. Obviously, when they're fully there, it turns into a back five with you know Conte and Fabregas dropped in as center defensive mids. But Christensen came in, and he was playing like a sweeper the entire first half. And while that's not bad... Whenever Bayern looked to break on us, which they did constantly, there's nobody stepping in to win it. It's almost like Christensen's mindset was, I'm just going to drop off and be the holding back here so you guys can step up. But Cahill and Spilicueta don't normally step in. They're normally the ones dropping off while the person in the middle is stepping in to stop the counterattack. So it just really didn't work with the system. I think... He looked good. He looked solid in the air. Defensively, he looked very strong. Um, but playing in that central role, he didn't really fit into that system. He didn't really, I guess, bring what David Luis normally brings, which is somebody stepping in the middle, somebody stepping into the midfield. He was normally dropping back, dropping back. And the third goal was because of that. You know, he's dropping off, so is Cahill. They're both dropping. Muller's just like, okay, you're going to give me space. I'm going to have a shot. And then has a great shot and puts it in the corner. So that was the only problem, I think, with the two changes made. Boga pretty much exactly what he did the last game, except less effective because Byron's back line is better than Arsenal's back line. Um, but I didn't really have a problem with that change at all. But Christensen, 
I think if you are going to put him in, I'd prefer to see him in one of the two positions where Cahill Espelicueta is rather than uh, the central position. Because I just really, I look at that and I think you need somebody in there who's going to step out and be more of a stopper. You know, David Luiz is one, and I think Zuma did it pretty well too, but obviously he's out alone now, so that doesn't matter. Um, so on to individual performances. Well, I guess first let's talk about the goals. First one... Um, didn't really get to see it because it took me a bit to finally find the game, but I did get to see the highlight of it, and basically from what I saw, it was a lot of dropping off, dropping off, dropping off, and he just has tons of space, finds the far corner, and here's the thing, most, pretty much the, the first goal and the third goal, you can kind of look at Courtois and saying, and say, why are you getting beat from so far out? But here's my mindset, and this is kind of what I thought last year, or no, two years ago when Czech went to Arsenal, and the very first game there was a shot from outside the box that you you think a, a keeper of Czech's quality is like, well, he should have that, but it goes in, even though it's from outside the box, it wasn't a great shot, it was just low into the corner. But watching it again, you can see where the shot comes in and Koscielny was just standing. And I think I may have talked about this before in one of my past reviews, but he was just sort of standing there and didn't really move to try to block the shot. And so Czech waits for him to get in the way of the shot. He doesn't, and now he has to react late to try to get down low. Both of those two goals, Muller's for the third and then Rafina for the first one, both of them, you could tell Courtois was almost waiting for somebody to sort of step in front of the shot, to throw their body in front of it to make the block. Nobody did on either one of those shots. On both of them, they were just backing off, backing off. Shot comes in, they turn to watch as it goes to the far corner. And Courtois like, why isn't anybody stepping in front of it? So while I do understand that Courtois should do better on those situations, he's also come to expect a defense in a midfield that's willing to throw themselves in front of a shot so that way he doesn't have to dive to the far post to make the save because normally somebody's in front of it. So... I think it's just kind of a mixed bag. It's kind of his expectations are messing with his, you know, saving ability. So you could blame him for expecting more out of his defense, or you could say, yeah, the defense should do better. It just depends on, I guess, where you play normally. If you're if you're a player watching, if you're a defender, you're probably saying the keeper should do better. If you're a keeper, you're probably saying the defense should step in front of it. So just, I guess, depends on where your opinions lie. Uh, it's Billy Cueta. I'm going to talk about him first because, honestly, probably most disappointing player so far in the preseason. And that's just because he was one of our best defenders. He was our best defender last season. I mean, so strong, so quick. He's just, he reads the game so well. He defends one-on-one so well. I haven't seen it this preseason. I don't know what happened to the Espilicueta Cueta from last season, but he has not been the same player at all. One-on-one challenges... He just dives in, it gets beat, and then he's walking back. I mean, the second goal, in my opinion, entirely his fault. He just, he should do better. And he should, okay, Ribery cuts him, he should follow him back. He should be putting in a challenge. But no, he gets beat, and then he starts walking back, and Ribery's like, okay. And just has an easy little chip into Muller, and at that point, it's like, there's nothing you can really do, because... Ribery shouldn't have all that space. You know, obviously you could complain about Alonso in the back post not getting in. Fabregas, you know, maybe should have gotten back a bit quicker to help out. But the fact of the matter is, Espilicueta, one, shouldn't get beat there at the top of the box. And two, when he does get beat, he should work back to make sure Ribery can't just have an easy cross with no pressure on him at all. So that's the second goal. Uh, for both of our goals, pretty well worked. The first one... After finally building up some possession, building up some pressure on their back line, nice little ball in, I think, from Conte, maybe. It was either Conte or Fabregas. Uh, William does well to leave it. Moses finds Alonso, or actually just low hard toward Batshuayi, but goes through everybody. Alonso is there waiting. Um, what a strike, though, for, for the finish. I mean, just really hard and powerful up high, away from the keeper. Uh, not really much they could do about it. So it was well worked. Good overall finish. And then the second goal, um, off of a corner, nice cross in from Fabregas. Good work from Murata to challenge the defender, and then it just lands at Batshuayi's feet, and he can finish it off. So those are all the goals. And 
pretty much, you know, it, it wasn't great defensively from either team. Uh, there were some mistakes that led to most of the goals. I will say our first goal was probably the best worked out of all of them. Because, um, I mean, you look at their goals. First one, defenders just backing off, giving the, uh, the guy plenty of time and space to shoot. Second goal, I mean, same thing, just diving in, stupid mistake, and then leaving the guy in ton of space to have an easy cross in. And then their third goal is pretty much the same thing, you know, giving the guy a ton of time and space to have a shot. So I will say that I think Conte is going to look at those goals and probably say, look, next game can't happen. We cannot give players, especially quality players like from Bayern Munich, we can't give them that type of time and space. We have to close them down. We have to make sure they're having to shoot or pass under pressure, but we can't have that again. <clears throat> so on of individual performances, uh, Courtois already talked about him a bit. Uh, he did have to make a couple saves that were pretty good, but I will, in my opinion, he probably will be disappointed with himself, even if you know, the defense didn't help him that much. He will be disappointed that he couldn't get down and make those saves. So, you know, kind of an uh, average game from him overall. Spilicueta already talked about him a bit, too. I'm really disappointed with him so far. Hopefully he can step it up next preseason game and really start to show his quality that he had last season because right now he's looking kind of half of the player that he was last season. And it's kind of scary going into the next campaign knowing that our best defender isn't fully ready for the season. You know, it kind of reminds me of when we won the season last time and came back in, and some of our quality players from the season before, you know, players like Matic and Hazard and Costa, preseason they weren't looking as good as they did the season before. So, obviously, Espelicueta is one of the probably two or three that are disappointing so far this preseason, but it's still, he's one of our most influential players. You want him to do better, so. Uh, Christensen in the middle, like I said, Looked pretty solid defensively, just because the system calls for a player who's willing to step into the midfield there. I don't think he looks good for that part of the field, uh, but I would like to see him play in one of the two covered defenders because I think he'd probably do pretty well there. Uh, but he looks he looks like a good, solid defender uh, as far as his skills go. Cahill... In my opinion, not bad game, not a bad game defensively, and even not a bad game with his passing, which normally is his biggest flaw. In my opinion, the reason I'm disappointed with him this game is because he was just recently named captain, and I saw no captaining going on. I saw whenever there's a moment, the, the third goal, the best example I can think of, Christensen and him are both dropping off. Neither is willing to step. You want your captain to sort that out. You know, Either tell him to step forward to put pressure on him, or you tell him to drop off with whoever it was that was running alongside him, and then you step to make sure he doesn't have a chance. But he wasn't talking. And defensively, pretty much the entire time, he wasn't talking. That's a problem. When you, when you just got named captain, when you're supposed to be the leader back there, you should be commanding the defense more. But he wasn't. It was so disorganized defensively. And I think he had a lot to do with that. I think without him talking, you look at what Terry did back there for so long, Terry made sure people were marked. Terry made sure defenders were where they're supposed to be. Terry made sure players like Alonzo weren't jogging back whenever there's a guy wide open on the far post. So that's my biggest complaint with Cahill. I think he really needs to step up as a leader if he wants to be the captain this season and be an effective captain at that. Um, <clears throat> Alonzo, first half I thought was very disappointing. Second half stepped it up a little bit. Uh, mainly defensively going forward he's just he looked a little slower today than he did against Arsenal and I don't know if that's because maybe Arsenal were a bit slower than Bayern Munich is uh, probably a little bit but I mean honestly going up against Oxlade Chamberlain who's a really fast player I thought he looked really good I thought he looked quick he looked fast today though just didn't look that fast and I, I don't know if just maybe James Rodriguez is faster than Oxlade Chamberlain or maybe Probably just because he's a better player. Um, but yeah, just looked really poor with the ball. Uh, defensively, first half, obviously, a lot of problems not getting back in, not tracking players. Uh, there was one in particular where he just got beat on the header because he's not even watching the guy coming in from behind him. But second half, stepped it up defensively, but still needs a lot of work on the ball. So I think this was just kind of a game to show, okay, he did well against Arsenal, but he's still got some flaws in his game that can be exposed.
Hopefully he can work those flaws out and get a bit better. Uh, Moses on the right side, I, kind of average. You know, didn't really show up today. Didn't really have those great moments, but still looked like he was working hard. You know, still probably looked like one of the hardest workers out there, if not Conte, than Moses. So I will say his work ethic was really good today. Just didn't look as effective as he normally does. Uh, his assist, though, for Alonzo's goal was a nice little cross. But defensively, definitely needs to work out those kinks still. Um, still doesn't look great in those situations where it's one-on-one. -on -one. He has to stand the guy up. He still dives in too many times. So just continue to work defensively, and I'm sure it will come along. Um, Conte and Fabregas in the midfield. Conte was working hard most of this game, but definitely looked outmatched. Mainly because, not because he's, you know... I saw a couple people on Facebook. I went on to, I guess, the halftime thing from Chelsea, their post. I saw a few people get on there, obviously supporters of other clubs, and start just bashing a lot of the Chelsea players. And one of the, one of the people kept saying, like, oh, look at Conte, just an average player. is being exposed. I'm like, no, no, that's not it at all. He's still a great player, and he showed that at times today with some of his interceptions, some of his hard work to win it, even late in the game, showing his endurance as Renato Sanchez, who was playing well most of the game, at the end of the game just looks so exhausted, and Conte's just still going, still going. So he still showed a lot to his game, but because it was a midfield comprised of three really good players, uh, Sanchez was one, and Muller was another, who was almost playing in behind the striker, and uh, who was the other one? The other defensive mid for... Uh, Ti Tiasso? Tiasi? I can't remember his name now. But those three in the midfield were just really working the ball around well. And so whenever you're just one player, it's harder to put pressure on somebody like that. Um, so I, I will say, you know, he wasn't helped by the fact that Fabregas isn't the best defensive player. Uh, he did as much as he could, but frankly, he's not fast enough to keep up with a couple of those guys. Uh, he's normally very good at reading the game, but when pitted up against players who are very quick very fast and very strong normally he struggles and today you could see that you know Renato Sanchez very strong very fast constantly picking the ball off of Fabregas uh, Muller did very well to open up space where somebody's got to track him somebody's got to go with him and it was very difficult for them to decide who to go who to stay so they were kind of picked apart in the first half but as the second half wore on as you know the Bayern Munich players started to wear down a little bit you could see where Conte's endurance just started to play in a lot more. Uh, Fabregas had a bit more time on the ball because they weren't closing him down as quickly, so he got to play a bit more. But even then, his passes today looked a little bit off. Um, I'm not sure if it was the pitch because there was one in particular that I saw. I'm like, normally that would be a great ball to somebody, but it looked like he duffed the pitch a little bit whenever he hit it. So I don't know if that had maybe an effect on him. Obviously, it can. But he just he looked a little off the pace today. His passing didn't look as clean as it normally does. And then Conte was just out outworked in the first half by three players. And then the second half finally started to get more into it as they were tiring out a bit more. So um, that's pretty much where they won most of the game was just through the midfield. And then to the front three, uh, Boga, Willian, and Batshuayi. I love the fact that Batshuayi is getting another start. Even though, you know, Murata is now in part of the team, I'd prefer Beshawai still get his chance. You know, he can still pop up with some really good moments here and there. Uh, I think his goal was just a perfect example of he's in the right place at the right time and can finish it off. So, uh, But as far as individual performances go for the three of them, Boga, in my opinion, was just outclassed today. You know, a player who looked good against Arsenal, looks even today had a couple moments where he just looks really good on the ball. But I think the biggest complaint that I have for him over, overall is the lack of effort defensively. And I think that's where not having Pedro today did hurt. Because normally Pedro would be all over Bayern Munich's midfield and back line. He'd just be flying everywhere, be trying to win the ball back as hard as he could. Boga obviously does not do that because he's not Pedro. So that is something that he didn't bring today that I think Pedro probably would have helped us a bit defensively. Um, I don't know if he would have stopped everything but obviously it would have provided a bit more. Uh, but on the ball, it looked okay. You know, had a few good moments here and there, but just obviously not used to playing up against some quality defense like that. Uh, and then Willian, 
in my opinion, he was just trying to do too much today. You know, too many times where he's trying to dribble, 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 instead of maybe looking to play quick one, two, you know, find somebody, find a layoff. It looked like he was just trying to do too much on his own. And so constantly trying to dribble, constantly getting the ball picked off him while he's trying to dribble, that was a problem today for him. So I will say I was a little bit disappointed with William overall. And then Bashuai up top, you know, worked pretty hard, didn't get a lot of good service today, but um, did get a goal. Aside from that, I will say probably should do a bit better when he does get his chances because whenever you're not getting a whole lot of chances, you want to prove yourself in the few that you do get. And there were too many times where his first touch let him down or you know, somebody put pressure on him and he did well to hold up the first challenge, but then you've got to pass under a challenge as well. He doesn't pass very well under a challenge. You know, Somebody puts a little bit of a push on him. Now he's off balance. Now he's not playing a great pass, and it gets picked off. So that's something that I think if he wants to be a world-class striker, you know, something, if you watch Costa last season, if there were ever games where he wasn't getting a whole lot of chances, you know, if the ball was constantly on our side of the field, and then all of a sudden he gets the ball, he's using that chance to try to do something with it. You know, he's creating an opportunity. He's forcing the other team back. That's why he didn't do that a whole lot today. So that's something he needs to work on a bit more. But you know, his work ethic still is there, and that's always good to see from a young player. Uh, and the first changes to come on were David Luis comes on for Christensen, and Murata came on for Boga. Uh, David Luis came in, changed the game. Like I said, he fits so much better into that stopper role. Um, it, it just looks so much better whenever a team's coming down the field quickly and you have somebody stepping into the midfield and putting pressure on rather than your center defender is dropped all the way back a good five yards behind your other two defenders who are also dropping off. So, yeah, I just think he fits so much better into the system for now. You know, if they change the system a little bit, if they tweak it to where one of the two defenders come in and pressure in the midfield, that may change it a bit to where we do need a sweeper. But for now, David Luis fits in that system the best. And, you know, came on, changed the game, brought a lot more going forward than Christensen did. Uh, and that just keeps the ball out of our half of the field, so that helps a lot. And then Murata came on, and I'm intrigued by this, you know, this front three. Because people look at it as pretty much you've got a striker and then two wingers. But the truth is, it's almost like you've got a central striker, somebody who's going to stay there and, you know, make runs in behind. And it's almost like you've got, you've got two attacking midfielders that can kind of switch out and one can step up and almost be a secondary striker. Or they can switch around, you know, they can go out wide if they want to, they can come in. There's a lot of freedom for these players. So moving Murata in, it almost looked like Batman was still the, the front central striker and then Murata and William were the two playing in behind. And Murata moves very well, and that's something that the commentators brought up as well. He's very good at making a lot of runs, you know, opening up space. He did that very well, you know, just a lot of running, running, moving, moving. He just kept moving, and it put the Byron back line under a lot of pressure. And they had to keep it, you know, they had to constantly keep up with him, and that's tiring. And you could see later on in the last 10 minutes, they looked so exhausted from how much they had to follow him. You know, somebody had to track him. Um... But as far as Murata himself, you know, on the ball, he looks pretty clever. You know, a couple of good moves here and there. Uh, in my opinion, got robbed on a couple of chances that were looked like a foul, but the referee just said, "Oh no, play on." Uh, the one in particular is where he rolled Hummels, and just the ball's going in behind, and Hummels sticks out a leg and looked like he caught him, and then he goes down. The referee's like, "Oh no, play on." I'm just like, really? Like you, you didn't see him stick out the leg at all? Um, but yeah, he, he looks like he's ready and raring to play, which, you know, a player coming off of kind of a break and not really playing that much. He comes into the team, works hard, works hard in training. Now he's getting in there, and he looks solid. So I'll be interested to see if he gets uh, the start next game against Inter Milan instead of Boga because I I would like to see, you know, some interchange there. You know, Murata playing up top, Batshuayi playing up top, somebody playing in behind. It would be interesting to see. Uh, the other changes that happened, Tamori came on for Alonzo at one point and moved Moses over to the left. He played on the right. Uh, it looked pretty good. You know, He's still young and you could see the youth in him a bit where he wants to get forward and help out but then has to get back and he's a bit slow to get back. Uh, but defensively he still looks solid. 
He's a player that might possibly, you know, work his way, especially because we're so weak now on the wingback role. Uh, Kennedy being sent home because of the whole uh, China debacle. It is something to look at where we still only have Moses and Alonzo. My next option was Kennedy, but it may take some time for that to sort of work itself out. You know, when a player says something like that on social media, obviously you want to punish him. And so I think this preseason sending home is punishment enough. You know, now you can't play anymore. But outside of Kennedy, I didn't really know who else we could look to for wingback. Obviously, Musone does another one that's been talked about. Um, he's a player that sort of worked his way, done pretty well at some other teams on loan, and is a player that a lot of people are begging to play more. Uh, can he play a wingback role? I don't know. But Tamori is one that stepped up in the first two games here and has looked pretty good on the wingbacks. So I'll definitely be curious to see if he can continue to improve and get better and better because right now we need somebody to back up Moses and Alonzo. And then a uh, few of the other changes. One in particular, I don't know exactly when it happened. All I know is at some point it happened. Uh, Eduardo came on for Courtois. Just at some point, uh, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Coleman had a shot. And he got down and saved it. I'm just like, wait, where did Courtois go? That's Eduardo. <laughs> when did this happen? Um, so I never actually saw when the change happened. But yeah, Eduardo came on. Had made like two saves. Uh, and then Pasalic came on for Fabregas at one point. He's still growing as a player, I think. He's a player that I talked about last review. Has a chance to maybe do something this season. You know, He's been on loan at AC Milan for a while. I think he's got a bit of a chance if he can continue to improve. You know, he's a young player who looks pretty strong in the midfield. Um, he's pretty big, too. You know, he's not extremely tall or extremely wide, but he's got some size on him. Um, so hopefully, you know, he can bring something to the field and show why he deserves to be out there. But it's going to be hard, obviously, with Conte Fabregas and Bakayoko coming in. It's going to be very difficult for him to break in. Uh, Baker came on for Betshuayi, which moved Murata further up forward. Uh, he still didn't really show anything for me. I talked about him last game against Arsenal. He was one of the few youth players that came in and just didn't show me anything of why he should be out there. There's just a lack of effort off the ball. On the ball, didn't look like he had much special to him. So, I don't know. He's got a lot to prove and didn't really do much for me today. But that's it for all the subs. And that's it for the game. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this game? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Chelsea reviews. I'll see you guys in the next game.